So I'm following this 25th anniversary Lamborghini Countach. The reason I'm following it is because I just bought it and uh, he's driving into my house for me through Las Vegas. I'm in my truck. Yeah, I do stuff like that sometimes. <laughs> Okay, it was about a year ago that I had a video on this car here, which is a Fiero kit car that's made into the 25th anniversary Lamborghini Countach. It's not stretched, it's not correct, I know. Haters and trolls, beware. But I thought it was really cool and I wanted to buy it from the guy and he sold it to me today. All right, it's a windy day. Um, so yeah, this is a, I want to say it's an 85 Fiero unstretched. And I think he told me it was built by DNR Replicars. I've got a big book of information about the car. So there's going to be a lot of content coming on this thing because we're going to be working on it. I think that, you know, it's not a bad quality build. You know, the gaps and things are, are decent. It's designed in a way that the whole tops of the windows just come out, which of course are not correct, but makes for good wind flow. And this whole top is a target top that comes right off. And it's actually really well built, very sturdy. Um, you know, real glass. Some of the interior needs help. You know, where these kit cars always fall apart is some of just the little details. Doesn't have real Caravella lights. Just got regular fog lights. That was busted. Not the correct mesh. There's a lot of things that aren't correct about it, but most people have never seen one of these cars in real life. Does not have original Lamborghini door handles. It just uses like, it's got this little push button thing. And uh, the remote actuated from the remote. So, uh, but at least they do go up. And there's actually tons of room in this thing for me. I'm 6'2", 210 pounds. And I fit in there nicely. The seats were white, trimmed in red, but they're all ripped up, so I put these seat covers on there. I'm gonna get all this extracted and get that reupholstered. I'm gonna do a lot of reupholstery in here, work on this dash and the gauges and the controls, put some real door handles and things in it. Um, I think, you know, the paint on it's really good for being as old as it is. It was built, I wanna say, I think in 1998. And I actually fit in the thing pretty good, considering, you know. The steering wheel is really small. Um, this is where these cars always fall apart. They, they lack in the upholstery because they try to do everything themselves. And that's really where they fail. But, you know, I fit in the thing. There's tons of room for me. Look at the foot room in this. You know, you got your fuse, but look how much footwear in there is. So, I mean, compared to a real Lamborghini, I'm wearing size 14 shoes. It's an automatic. Yes, it's an automatic. But, uh, which is what I wanted. I wanted an automatic. I know there's a lot of haters out there. But, I mean, like, this is just, there's duct tape, black duct tape, you know. This is where this isn't finished. And this is where these cars fall apart. And this is where I'm going to make some changes. I think this car has good bones. It really does. It's a good running driving car. It has the uh, standard uh, Fiero V6 in it, which uh, seems to run great, doesn't overheat. Now don't forget, if you watch my other videos, I have that other Lamborghini Countach kit that I bought solely because I wanted the wheels and all the extra spare parts, but it has that new Cadillac V8 motor in there thinking very seriously of sticking that in this car. Although I wonder if it's even worth doing. Now I have that other 88 Fiero that I bought with the 3800 motor. It's not the supercharged, but it is the 38. And that thing runs like a champ, fires up and runs perfect. But this car, it runs and drives kind of fine. I mean, yeah, it's a slow ass V6. Doesn't have air conditioning. It fires right up and it runs. It's all GM, um, you know, don't have the air conditioning in there that's gonna have to be added for sure but the thing runs runs cool I'm catching a lot of gas smell so probably you know being it's a fuel injected car that could just be uh, it's dumping gas and I'm smelling exhaust burn 
or it could be a fuel return line or a vacuum leak or something. We're going to get to the bottom of that. But I might just end up keeping this motor, just leaving it the way it is because it works. You know, the big mistake you can make with these cars is putting too much money into it. And you just can't put too much money into a car that's just going to be wrong always. <laughs> It'll never be right. Let's take a look at some of this dash. They've just used speaker felt. He said he did it because it was too reflective, but I mean, this is just glued on there. And it looks like it was trimmed with electrical tape, I think. But this is just vinyl. It looks like it's from this white underneath. It looks like it was black painted vinyl or something, or maybe it's, I don't know. So I might go ahead and have all this redone. And I mean, this, you know, get a real Lamborghini steering wheel, kind of un -GMs this stock here, redo this system here, um, put in the fake gated shifter, but that's really an automatic. Uh, might try to perfect this window system a bit because re I'd rather have air conditioning than the windows down. But I dig this whole target top thing. It's held in with screws and it's not any much more of a pain in the ass than if you've ever had a C4 Corvette target. I mean, that's a pain in the ass, yeah. But like I've driven the car and um, it's not insanely hard to drive. This mirror, I think I would mount it differently, but it's actually um, a video screen. So it comes up as a video screen so you can see out the back. It's not bad, really. The visibility in this thing, I mean, it's just, a, that's the way a Lamborghini is. I mean, you got this pillar here, right? So your, your range of view, after you pull the steering wheel down, is, I think it's just a few inches, you know, horrible, horrible visibility. But that's just the way a Countach is. I mean, you can't, even if you could see out the back window, all, you, all you're gonna see is your wing. I mean, so what's the point? Like I can't really see much of anything behind me. Well, good thing this camera's here. I don't wanna run into the fake Ferrari over there. So now I have a fake Testarossa and a fake Lamborghini. I'm on my way to being a complete and total wannabe. Okay, there's no power steering and I might put that in. We put power steering into my DeLorean and it worked fine. Yeah, they make an electric power steering kit that you can put in just about anything. And um, yeah, dude, I can't see shit. All right. Oof. It's got skateboard wheels mounted to the front. There we go. Good luck seeing behind you. Forget about it. So I've watched so many videos of uh, people like Tamarian over at Curated driving these Countaches and Hoovy with his real anniversary car. It's not too undifferent. However, I've got to say, I've never actually been in a real Countach. Or I just run over a Tien or something. Uh, but as far as I know, you know, I've never been in any Lamborghini at all, ever. So I'm hoping that I ran over something and something didn't just fall off the car. Um, but anyway, yeah, I've never actually driven a real Lamborghini, not a Gallardo, a Countach or anything. And, I'm, and I've never driven a real Ferrari either. But I can tell you that I fit in this thing totally comfortably. I have tons of headroom. I mean, I'm lounged out here. I got tons of room. Got tons of, I mean, I have the biggest feet ever and they fit just fine. And I mean, other than the lack of air conditioning in Las Vegas, you get a couple of months a year where it's just beautiful. Like it's probably 95 degrees today, but I'm fine. As long as there's some air moving, moving I feel fine. And I'm wearing all black. So the dude that sold it to me, Mike, um, great guy. 
he doesn't know anything about the car really he's not a car dude but um he did tell me he's never driven it on the highway he said he's afraid to drive it on the highway he's never had the thing over maybe 40 miles an hour and i'm like why like and he goes i don't know i'm just skittish you know he's timid and he was worried about the car blowing apart i guess i don't know it seemed pretty solid to me i mean i'm driving it right now i'm not catching any major squeaks or rattles just wind and um it drives straight although the steering wheel is sideways which i think is a, just a mounting issue i'm trying to see it doesn't seem like it's yanking it's going to the right a little bit and the wheel is turned to the left at about 10 o'clock could be just a mounting issue we're going to figure that out i'm going to replace that with a real lamborghini steering wheel um but listen i've drove some janky cars uh for those of you not familiar with my shop we've done over 45 delorean time machines eight night riders eight blues mobiles but four ectos a couple of 18 van jurassic parks we had a tv show called screen machines last year you might have remembered a video we did with an 89 batmobile so i'm used to pretty crazy stuff and kit cars are no different I do want to do some more adjustment to this door. There's about a quarter inch of adjustment. And there's no like um, armrests of any kind. The distance between like my hip and the door, like you could put a small child there. There's like, what is that, 10 inches? Crazy. All right, I'm going to take it on the highway for the first time. This dude's never drove it on the highway. And uh, the speedometer isn't working. So I don't know how fast it's going. It seems to be doing just fine. I gotta be honest, it seems fine to me. I mean, I'm probably only going 55, maybe 60. But it's driving good. I mean, it's loud as shit. That's just the wind. But it drives like a Fiero. What is clicking? I think the blinker got stuck. Interesting. Just like a real Countach, I'm getting a strong gas smell. I don't know if it's because the engine is right behind me or, you know, it seems like unburnt gas. I don't know if there's a leak. You know, the filler neck is right there by my shoulder, which on a Countach would normally be on the other side, I believe, on the right side. But um, it could be I'm just smelling the vapors coming out of the filler neck. But it's doing great. I'm driving fantastic. All right, here's the hard part. Birthing yourself out of this thing. There's, there's no way to get in and out of this. And without looking like the Wolf of Wall Street. There we go. Okay, this, that leg, and this one. Oh, okay, all right. So graceful. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh, I wasn't so bad. Okay, all right. This is not good. Fix that. But door open that closes. Alright, let's have a look in the back. This is gonna require me using both hands and some sticks. Okay, so obviously these pistons are bad, need to be redone. And there's not even a latch to hold this thing down. So this nicely decorated stick. So it holds this thing up battery's been relocated to the back and gingerly held together with bungee cords zip ties there's no rear wells there's not even a latching mechanism for this so basically pure gravity keeps it down looks like a very standard Fiero v6 back here um, okay seems like it's doing fine not sure what the it's in the tote, some extra stuff. 
definitely need some wheel wells to get it. That's going to be creating a lot of wind drag and throwing trash up in there. Again, there, with the exception of the doors, like not a single latch on this car latches. I mean, this thing is, again, just held down with gravity and wind. So these are things we're going to address, put in proper working latches, proper air funneling. This wiring is just a mess. You know, it always amazes me that there are guys that are so talented that they can do all this body work and mount this together, but they can't wire anything. I mean, this is a ridiculous rat's nest of relays, grounding, butt splices. This is the problem with most kid cars because like you get a guy, he knows how to weld, he knows how to do fiberglass body work. But when it comes to the engineering of the car, making it a car, it's a complete and total failure. I mean, um, like there's a, is that an overflow or is that a washer jug that's just not hooked up to anything? So I guess that's the washer. The windshield wipers. Airbags are actually conducting any air. Not. I don't know. Let me see. You can see that NACA duck on the end, other side over there where the fuel filler should be. They put the fuel filler on this side. It's not a big deal or anything, but like it's just one of those things, you know. I think that the car is really well done. I mean, I would like to have a pinstriper come in and put a super thin black line on all the edging to make it look a little bit more authentic. Maybe get some more authentic lighting, you know, lenses. I think he said these come off a Chevette. But the real Lamborghini lights aren't incredibly hard. But quality wise, I mean, the gaps aren't terrible. You know, like it's just not that bad. And if you've ever seen an actual Countach, they're not well made anyway. I need to get these headlights fixed. They have to be manually operated. Got to get air conditioning. And all this has to just be properly funneled. Um, that's all going to happen. This entire dash is coming out. This whole interior is going to be redone. That's for sure. Because that's just got to be done. The guy was telling me that he didn't replace these pistons because I couldn't find the part number. And I'm like, look, you know, there's websites you can go and you can order any length and any pressure. So the amount of lift that you need. So like, for instance, what you would do is you would take a small shipping scale and set it down and set this down on top of it and see how much weight you're getting on the door, right? I wouldn't want to put too powerful a piston because it might you might hit a bump and then it would raise up but you want it to be able to hold it. So you'd find out what the weight of this thing is, like 30 pounds, 40 pounds, whatever. Then you would get two pistons that are half of that weight each, and then maybe a little extra. Because there's no latching mechanism to hold this closed. There's not even a latch there. There's a place for a latch. He's got this ground, that's funny. But I'm not gonna pick on the guy. He doesn't know anything about cars, but the guy that built this car, uh, which I, he did a fantastic job building the physical car but you know, just need a little help in the engineering and the wiring section. All right, I gotta put the phone down so I can close this. See, for instance, my uh, fake Ferrari over here that's covered up, you've seen in other videos. Those are real Ferrari Testarossa lights. Um, you know, and some of the badges are cor correct and things, although the size for the badge, like look how big that space was. I need to get this. Yeah, here's the deal. This cover I bought goes to an actual Testarossa. And this just shows you how much bigger this car is by a few inches all the way around. This is a Testarossa cover and it doesn't fit because this car's bigger than a Testarossa. So it's just not working. And there we go. We'll so there'll be a lot more content coming on this fake Lamborghini. Stay tuned if you're interested in this kind of content because it's going to get more complicated. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Shout out to my bro, Sam Hard. I saw that you also just got a pretty cool little fake Lamborghini. There's a few of these out there. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. Catch you guys later.